Hi, I'm Kathy Neptune and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to share with you tips, tools, and recipes to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. So first of all, I want to welcome you to summer because the summer season is here finally. And uh, I love all the uh, emails and messaging that I get from everybody. And I want to read you one that kind of impacts and, and uh, relates to what we're doing tonight. And uh, great email. This is from Diane in Fitchburg. And she says, hi, Kathy. Love all your recipes and ideas that you share. It, well, thank you. Um, she, she goes on, I made the chicken shawarma for a barbecue and everybody loved it. Check that recipe out from last month. It's really a winner. And Diane goes on, she says, I wanted to know if you could include some recipes and or tips for sugar-free ideas. We're trying to reduce sugar intake and, and your input would be helpful. Well, thank you, Diane. That's a great email. And I hear where you're coming from because um, a lot of people I know are diabetic or pre-diabetic or just want to cut back on sugar. So you'd be surprised at how little you, it, it's going to impact your recipes. And the secret there is to use a sugar substitute This is equivalent one-on-one -on -one with a regular sugar. So if you'd use a tablespoon of regular sugar, use a substitute that would use the same amount, a tablespoon of a sugar substitute or sweetener. And then you really don't even have to think about it. You can automatically substitute most of those in regular everyday cooking. So we're going to try and do that tonight. And hopefully that will give you some ideas and inspiration as well. And what I'm going to do tonight on our menu, as you can see, we're doing shrimp. But shrimp in a different way, we're doing shrimp cakes. And I thought that would be kind of fun because I've had uh, crab cakes and I've had lobster cakes and even fish cakes. And I thought, why not try doing a shrimp cake? And we have raw shrimp and just a medium sized thawed and deveined. And I'm cutting it into chunks because we're going to put half of it in the food processor and kind of make a paste, if you will, as a base coating. And I wanted to show you see these shrimp say that they're cleaned and deveined and they are but a lot of times you don't realize that there's a vein on this side as well so i just hold it by the end slice down and pull out the other vein that's there which usually they don't do um, in whether they're fresh or frozen so make sure that little extra detail is important so we're going to take these chunks and you can see i'm cutting them like each in three pieces and we're going to do about half of this amount in the food processor and we're going to grind these up and make sure i have them all cut into equal chunks well, it's about half i would say put that in there and then we're going to add just about a tablespoon of mayonnaise that sounds weird but just to add a little bit of creaminess and then a little bit of lemon juice freshly squeezed lemon juice about a tablespoon or so and then let's see i have an egg i'm going to put that there for now and i'm going to add in first of all the breadcrumbs and these are about a quarter cup and I like fresh breadcrumbs, and I um, that's about a quarter cup. And I like to leave the bread out um, on, a, on a dish overnight and then let it dry out. So it, to me, they just taste fresher. And then we're going to do a probably a tablespoon or so of chopped chives. Not too much so that you overpower the flavor of the shrimp. And then I'm going to get my seasonings and I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt. Now, if well, two of these equals a teaspoon. Now, you want to check what kind of seasonings you have. And you know me and my seasonings. I have this and I have a um, seafood spectacular. And in the back, you want to read the ingredients and adjust your salt accordingly. Now this has dill, lemon, paprika, garlic, lime, rosemary, parsley, chili, and cumin. So there's no salt. So that's why I used a full teaspoon of salt. And this is a Cajun 
herb seasoning, which I thought of crab cakes. And we're going to do a remoulade sauce, which is a mayonnaise-based sauce. So the Cajun seasoning kind of reminded me of that. And um, in here, it's not a whole lot of, let's see here, what's in there? It's dill, oregano, garlic, and garlic powder, and uh, paprika. So we can use a little of that, there's no salt in that. And then again, a Creole seasoning, which is pretty much like Cajun seasoning. And this has garlic, uh, spices, cayenne pepper, paprika, onion, um, yeast, and soy sauce. That surprises me, the soy sauce. So I'm just, for flavoring, not a lot, not even a, a half a teaspoon. A few shakes of each just to bring in some flavor. And this is our Fisherman Seafood Spectacular. So I thought that's going to add a nice flavor. And it's so fragrant. And this is a Cajun herb just a little bit and i'm going to also add those into our mayonnaise based remoulade sauce i'm going to add some lemon zest not a whole lot just a pinch because you can and then i'm going to put in our egg and i mixed it up And we're going to blend this. I'm not going to use quite all of it. And that's about three quarters pound of shrimp, by the way. And these, this recipe is so easy to double or triple. But depending on the size of the shrimp cakes, this will make two to three large. Or you, these would be great for little mini sliders and make smaller ones for uh, little shrimp cake sliders. So we're going to pulse this five to six times. So I'm going to use the chop. Um, blade on this. So one, two, three, and then after three I'm going to kind of scrape down the sides to make sure everything comes in contact with the blade. Four, five, six. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to add the rest of the shrimp in here. So that we're not going to puree. You don't want to paste. You want to have really nice chunks in there as well. So the first mixing that we do is a paste which forms a base that's going to kind of like the glue, if you will, to hold everything together. So let's get this three or four more. One, two, three. Let me just, again, scrape it down because we want an even distribution of the chunks. One, two more. So that was five. And then I want you to see how this looks. It's pretty chunky, yet you can see it holds together really, really well. So we're going to do, let me see how many shrimp cakes that we have. And I don't, see, I didn't add all the egg in here, which I don't think we really needed. And I want to give this an extra mix. And we're going to take these and I think I'll have enough for three shrimp cakes so I'm gonna with my impeccably clean hands gently form these into little shrimp mounds and you don't think this is going to work but what we're going to do is chill these in the refrigerator for about half an hour so I'm going to take this here Scrape all these goodies, and you can see the little flecks of green onion. You can smell a little bit of the lemon in the seasonings. I'm going to put this over here and get our final shrimp cake. And you can kind of eyeball it. They're not going to be perfect because they're handmade. These are going to be so good. And this little detail about forming them ahead of time. It's going to help the breadcrumbs absorb into the mixture and kind of solidify so that they'll be a little more dense. And you can see we kind of measured pretty well there. So they came out kind of even. 
and pop those in the refrigerator for at least half an hour. I'm going to cover these up and when we come back we're going to make our coleslaw to go along with this so that can set and then a remoulade sauce to go with the shrimp cakes. So we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. We have our fish cakes, or not our fish cakes, our shrimp cakes, chilling in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. And we're going to make a coleslaw to go with it because it's New England and we love our coleslaw. So right here I have about a half a, a head of, a small head of cabbage that I've shredded and two regular sized carrots. So I'm going to put that in the bowl. And I'm going to make a dressing to go with it. So I'm going to set that aside. And just a basic dressing with about, oh, let's do a half a cup of mayo, which seems like a lot, but not really. So about half a cup. And then we're going to do some sugar. And this is a sugar substitute, a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar. So two tablespoons of white sugar measured out very carefully. That's about a tablespoon. And you can always adjust this to your taste. And a little bit of lemon juice, about a tablespoon and a half. So there's one, fresh of course, two tablespoons, a tablespoon and a half rather. I'm going to mix that up. And then a tablespoon of vinegar. Now you can use whatever flavor. I happen to love the apple cider vinegar. So a good tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I'm going to blend all that together. And then a little salt and pepper. About a half a teaspoon of salt because cabbage needs a lot of flavor. And then some black peppercorn. Now I know some people, a couple of good grinds of fresh black pepper. Some people like celery salt in their coleslaw. I'm not a big fan. I like to be able to taste everything in there. And since we have so much seasoning in the crab cakes in the remoulade, I wanted to kind of keep this very, very basic. So we're going to put that over the slaw. And ideally, you can make this ahead of time and leave it set the night before and let the flavors meld all together. It's so much better. But you can also serve it fresh like this, too. And it's not going to matter, but look at all the different colors. You could add, I know some people add an apple to this, or you could do radishes. Uh, I wouldn't do cucumbers because it makes it too watery. But that is going to be a nice, fresh coleslaw to go with our shrimp cakes. So that's that, and we're going to set that aside. Let's put it right here. And now we're going to make a remoulade sauce to go with our crab cakes. I keep calling them crab cakes, our shrimp cakes. So let's get that, all of these ingredients, and then put these in a bowl like so. And I wanted to use um, some more mayo. And I added some, I'm going to add a little bit of mustard to this mayo and put this in here. This is going to be our remoulade, like a mayonnaise base, almost like a tartar sauce, but a different little twist on it. So that's about a third, a quarter of a cup. And again, to enhance and brighten the flavor, because you want this nice and bright, some lemon zest, lemon juice, just about a teaspoon or so, because we're not making a lot we only have three crab cakes, and by the way, you can double this recipe. It's no problem at all to double or even triple it if you'd like. I'm going to add some chopped green onions for more flavor. That's good. And then I'm going to add some roasted garlic. Not the fresh garlic. I think it's a little too strong, but just powdered garlic. Okay, not the garlic salt, just garlic. 
And then what I like to do is to add some hot sauce and some cocktail, regular shrimp cocktail sauce. I think this adds a nice depth of flavor, not too much, about a half a teaspoon. And then, depending on how brave you are, you can add some hot sauce. So just a few dashes on the top. And because you can never have enough flavor, I also have my favorites, Peppadu peppers that come in a jar and pepperoncini as well. And these I've chopped up finely. They each come in a jar. But if you were making, like, this reminds me of if you were making a tartar sauce, you always put in a relish. It adds to the flavor, and it adds a nice piquant flavor as well. So we're going to do that, set that aside, and put it in a pretty little bowl. And we're going to check on our shrimp, uh, um, shrimp cakes, see how they're setting up. And then we're going to move on to dessert. And when we come back, I'll show you how to assemble everything as well. So we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Before we do our shrimp cakes, we have our coleslaw marinating here. And we're doing for dessert a strawberry shortcake trifle. And this is very flexible. Again, we're using a sugar substitute, equal amounts as you would uh, with regular sugar. So I have about I'd say two cups of sliced strawberries, and I use about a third cup of sugar substitute. And I wanted to show you again how I do my strawberries. I just love using these little tools. And remember, you can email me if you want these tools. And I would say, look at how beautiful. It's been a great year for strawberries. And um, I do, I'll have to do a cheesecake recipe, strawberry stuffed uh, cheesecake and you core them out and you fill this little section with a no-bake cheesecake and sprinkle a topping of graham crackers and you have these beautiful little inside-out strawberry cheesecakes. So this is a little core tool and then I take my egg slicer and I think you've seen me use this before. I slice my strawberries point side up and you just press them like so and you take another one and you just keep going. It makes it so much easier then slicing them individually. And then if you wanted to do a beautiful strawberry fan, you just do part way and then open it up and it's like a little strawberry fan on the top. So I'll just put that in there. And those are our strawberries. And let those macerate or marinate for a good, I'd say a good hour at least, or the night before. We'll mix that in. And really, this is all you need. Look at how beautiful they are. And I hope you're enjoying this strawberry season because it doesn't last very long. But what a great family thing to go strawberry picking. So I'm going to set those aside. And what I baked here are some biscuits. Now, I start with a buttermilk biscuit mix. And I use about a cup of flour to about half a cup of milk and a tablespoon and a half of melted butter and a tablespoon of sugar substitute. And it's easy to do, or you can e email me for the recipe or you can follow your favorite biscuit recipe. And you can, this makes about four large biscuits, but we only need two for this. Now you could arrange this in a large trifle bowl like this, or use these cute little individual trifle bowls and do individual strawberry shortcake trifle. So I'm going to break these in the bottom. And I do this because biscuits are very dry and you want the strawberry juices to infuse into the mixture. So we're just crumbling as much or as little as you'd like. And divide them easily, evenly. There's um, one biscuit will certainly do two servings. And then I'm going to take the strawberries that have a ton of juice. Make sure you get a lot of the juice in there as well. And you can serve this on a buffet and everybody can kind of help themselves. If you'd like, set up everything and do a sample one so everybody can do their own. 
But remember, there's no sugar in this. So you can virtually have this. I don't know about the carbs, but the fruit is a good thing to have. And a little more juice. And I did a whole batch of strawberries because I'll have these for breakfast and as a snack later on in the evening. It's just a great thing to have on hand. And then I have sugar-free whipped topping. And of course, you can do in a canister. It comes sugar-free in a canister. You could do a yogurt if you'd like, any flavor yogurt or a vanilla. Like just a plain vanilla yogurt would be awesome. And then my favorite thing from my herb garden, this is a berries and cream mint. And this one is a strawberry mint. How fun is that? So those are our beautiful little strawberry shortcake trifles. That is says summer to me. That is fabulous. So I'm going to get my uh, little shrimp cakes out of the refrigerator and we're going to put them on a hot grill. I'm going to put a little bit of butter and olive oil in the pan and get those started. And I wanted to mention too, I didn't do it in the recipe. Uh, what I did is I took some frozen butter. I just took a stick of butter and just took a little tiny piece of that frozen butter and cut off a chunk. And I right at the end, I stuck some butter in the center of the shrimp cake and that's going to baste if you will the uh, butter is going to infuse into that and give it a wonderful basting from the inside on your shrimp cake it makes a huge buttery difference so uh, we'll be right back hi welcome back i'm putting my shrimp cakes into the frying pan and i have about a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter preheated the pan and these are very, very delicate. So you want to be very careful when you flip them and turn them, making sure that they cook and that we flip them. And I'm going to get a clean spatula to do this. I'll be right back. And they don't need a lot of time. You don't want to overcook them because shrimp are very delicate. But they're getting nice and brown on the bottom. And I'd say about three to four minutes on each side. Now, another way to serve these, you could even do a shrimp buffet if you want, a shrimp burger buffet. And put out some, make these a little smaller. You'd probably get six to eight of them, little patties. And put out some slider rolls, uh, sweet Hawaiian slider rolls, and some lettuce, some Roma tomatoes would be the perfect size, the remoulade sauce that we made, uh, pickled onions that I'm going to serve along the top or the side, and have everybody make their own little shrimp burgers. I think that would be a fun and easy buffet. And who doesn't like shrimp burgers? So you could do chicken burgers and turkey burgers and just make a burger buffet, if you will and have all different varieties. I think you'd be the talk of the tree if you did that. It's a fun way to entertain, too. And uh, something that you don't have to serve your guests. They can all help themselves and kind of select what they'd like for their dietary needs as well, which is important these days. People think about that, and it's a big factor in entertaining. So give yourself some, a break from entertaining and do it easy. So we're going to flip these over. You can see how beautifully brown they're getting. So that didn't take long. That was probably barely three minutes. And use a non-stick um, pan. I wouldn't, this is one of the few times I would not probably use a cast iron skillet. They're just too delicate to use a cast iron skillet. You wouldn't want to risk having them stick. But these are beautiful and that little pat of butter that I put it was just a little probably not even an inch um, I put it right inside the raw shrimp cake before I put them on the grill so it makes a nice uh, buttery flavor inside and keeps the shrimp moist as well you can see the specks of the green chives and a remoulade sauce I'm gonna have our coleslaw a 
was a great summer meal. Really, really nice meal. And you can do them spicy if you want. You can add all different flavorings to these. Just think about what you like and what is in season. And um, make it to whatever you think your family and friends would like. I know on a nice summer day, I'd do a nice uh, white Chardonnay spritzer with this. It'd be awesome. Really nice. You can also grill a lemon with this. Um, you can do a grilled avocado. I think that would be nice on the side. In fact, I might uh, grab an avocado here. Maybe do a little sliced avocado. I love avocado and it goes, it has such a nice affinity for the shrimp. And I'm going to put that right on the grill. And those, you kind of test them by touching them in the middle. And they should kind of not, they're a little bit more springy, you can see like that. So I'm going to keep cooking these for another, probably another minute or so. And when we come back, we're going to plate everything for our summer slaw, shrimp cakes, and strawberries. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Look at our beautifully golden brown shrimp cakes our remoulade sauce. I'm gonna plate everything, our grilled avocado. I say grilled, but it was fried in the same skillet next to the shrimp cakes. Then I'm gonna plate our beautiful coles creamy coleslaw, like so. And our shrimp cake. Look at how beautifully golden brown a nice remoulade right over the top. And because we can, and for color, remember our beautiful onions that we soak in sugar substitute in water. And you let them set so they're nice and sweet. And then we have our beautiful strawberry shortcake trifles with a little mint on the top. We talk about shrimp cakes. Uh, I mentioned uh, crab cakes as well. Very, very similar, but you're gonna just, this is a great surprise and a wonderful summer treat for everybody. It's colorful, it's light, and it's sugar-free. So I hope you try these recipes. Uh, email me for uh, any details, questions, or comments, or where to get these wonderful tools as well. Thank you all for watching, and may the fork be with you.